Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our weekly Novolaris community call. Let me remind you that this session is recorded and uh, will be published on YouTube. So if anyone has an issue with this, now is the time to react. Otherwise, uh, let's go ahead. And as you know, this session will be dedicated to practical training on how to develop um, Kubernetes operators in Python, which will be given by Michele. But before uh, we go uh, to the real training, I would like to brag a little bit about our achievement. So uh, we are really happy and excited to announce that we released the first alpha version of Nuvolaris. And uh, now I'm going to walk you through uh, to show you what you can do with it and how you can download and actually use it. So I'll just uh, share my screen for the moment, can you see it? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So basically what you should do is go to Nuvolaris GitHub repo and more specifically into Nuvolaris CLI, which is command line interface. Uh, and in on the right hand side in the section releases, you will find all the tarballs for different uh, operating systems and architectures you can use. And basically, you download the tarball and then you have to extract it. After you have done this, uh, you should go to the subdirectory called nuv for Nuvolaris. And if you run just nuv without any arguments, you will see that it already uh, supports a couple of actions. Uh, basically, the Nuvolaris CLI already embeds the OpenWhisk CLI that we can use to actually run uh, actions, which I will show you later. But before uh, you do that, uh, in a development environment, let's say you are a developer who wants to uh, create some actions, like some to execute some functions, uh, you should make sure that you have a Kubernetes cluster running locally on your machine. And for this purpose, we created a nuv dev cluster command, which if you run it, uh, we'll first check if you have a running um, Kubernetes cluster on your machine. And if that's not the case, it will, um, so you have to specify whether you want to create or destroy the cluster. In this case, we are creating the kind cluster. Kind stands for Kubernetes in Docker. So it will run the development, let's say, cluster on your machine. And before that, it would uh, it will um, do some pre-flight checks. Like it, it will check if you have uh, the right version of Docker installed on your machine, if it's uh, installed at all and if you have enough memory to run Kubernetes cluster locally. So as you can see, if you run nuv dev cluster create, you will find yourself with a working cluster locally on your machine, which you can then check by running the kubectl command. Like if you now run kubectl get nodes, you will see that you have two pods running. One is the Kubernetes control plane and the other is the worker pod. And now we get to nuv setup command, which does exactly what it says. So uh, it checks first if you have the local cluster running. If uh, you have it, then it sets the context to nuvolaris. So if you have multiple clusters running, which can be the case, it finds the one which is called nuvolaris. Then it creates the namespace inside this cluster called Nuvolaris. And then it does the series of deployment of objects we need to actually run uh, our custom operator that Michele will uh, show you later how to build. So we uh, deploy custom resource, then service account, then cluster role binding. Then we write the WISC properties file, which is needed to communicate with OpenWISC. 
And now uh, we are waiting for Nuvolaris operator to run. So we are basically waiting here for the pod to be in running state and waiting is the hardest part. So this Nuvolaris operator pod when it's run will actually run open whisk pods. And so with a single command, you have the complete environment up and running. So now we have the operator running and you can uh, check what you have in the cluster by running watch kubectl get pods. So you see, we have the pod Nuvolaris operator running and it starts open whisk pods. And now we get to the point where we can actually do something. So we will create a simple, uh, first we will check if we have some registered action in OpenWhisk, as you can see, we have none. Then we will create a simple JavaScript file in which we just like accept one argument and uh, print it out. Then we will create OpenWhisk action called hello. We will list to check if it's there. Then we will invoke it without arguments. It will print out hello world. And if you call it with an argument, it will print out the argument. So yeah, under the hood, you can see that the open whisk is actually running within pods. If you check the running pods in your um, cluster. 